Hello and welcome back to Metanauts. I'm Lee Mason, also known as Metageist, and in this episode we speak to the artist from week two of the Portals exhibition that I've curated for First Dibs. Now, um, you might have seen last week's episode where we spoke to the artists from week one. I'm very proud to say that every single artist in that show has now sold a piece on the new platform, so it's going really well. Um, in this episode we meet Immy, Process Smith, Rosie Summers, Lucas and Franco, and talk a little bit about how their art was created and also how it fits into the Portals theme. Um, yeah, cool. Well, thank you very much for joining us and uh, let's jump right into it. Thank you everybody for joining us for the second episode of Metanauts that focuses on the portals drop for first dibs. I've got a bunch of artists in here again to talk about their artwork that's drop in on uh, the second show. And uh, in, in the room I've got I've got Immy, I've got Process Smith, I've got Rosie and I've got Lucas and Franco. And we're just going to talk to each of the artists independently, one after the other, and get a little bit of information about their process and their artwork, and specifically about the art dropping in this show. So first up, we're going to talk to Imi. Hello, Imi. Hi. Uh... Nice to have you here. Uh, Imi, Imi is a digital painter uh, working in Procreate, I believe, and uh, we've got a bunch. We've got a collection here of artworks that focus on how. Um, the concept of how the connection between people can kind of create portals. I think that's my, my brief ex explanation. Can you tell us a little bit about your pieces? I'm going to bring them up on screen now and we can go through them one by one. Yeah, um, so a lot of my inspiration derives from my surroundings. So um, I perceive people, objects and emotions within my environment as something more beautiful than their realities. So. I kind of just want to make everything pretty. <laughs> so my fantasies of a utopian world is what drives my artistic concepts and ideas. And for this piece that you're seeing right now, um, I wanted to emphasize on two juxtaposing emotions of togetherness and emotional distance, which are both being felt at the same time. Um, I wanted to reflect on a sense of self fading away or like um, trying to escape reality or any means to run, but even within a space where you're together, you're still so separate um, in your mind. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the gist of what this um, art piece is. And in terms of the portals um, exhibition as a whole, it reflects on ideas of escapism. Um, this piece here is called Complete. Um, it was more about in embracement. So, Essentially, I, I focused on various different emotions throughout the, I think it was five pieces I did for the portals exhibition, um, each different from the other. I experimented with homesickness, um, kind of love, hate, um, absentness. Um, this piece here, um, it's, it's about abandoning independence and coexisting with each other. Um, so yeah, that was, one of my more nicer pieces, kind of pieces, I guess. <laughs> I can see how you've got the closeness and distance reflected in the colours, so that you've got the same two colours for the characters and the same two planets in the last piece and this one. Nice. This one's cool. We can especially see the portals link in this one. Yeah, so this one's called Escape, and um, it's, it's kind of about pushing the idea of solitude, um, kind of like a concept of entering purgatory from from hell, um, kind of reflecting this lockdown for a lot of people. Uh, it's the door is supposed to be an escape route. Um, it's quite dark. It's about entering a peaceful environment, but they don't like not feeling like you belong there. Um, a search for peace. Just these are the themes that I kind of base this piece around, or what I was feeling in the moment when I created the piece. Um, I I tried to incorporate. Um, beings with, without identities um, in large spaces um, so that you feel that feeling of emptiness. Uh, yeah. Excellent. And I love this one. I know. Oh, <laughs> it you. takes you a split second to realise what's happening here. Can you tell us a little bit more about that story? Um, so it? this was my, this was like, this is the original piece and every other piece derives from this piece. So this is called Homesick. And um, the, the person that you see looking into the world is supposed to be me. And um, it's about es escaping, escape, escaping like life and being trapped in, um, in a world inside your head and lusting after dreams that 
you that are so close but you can almost touch them but they're not there um as an artist I like to branch out and explore as many forms of art as I can so um this kind of detailed illustration was it took me a long time to do but it was really fun to do and um I'm trying to refrain from sinking into a habit of uh, bounding my creativity to just um to just like one single art style that's why this is so different from the rest of my um pieces in the portals exhibition but um yeah this is also my favorite piece <laughs> I was most invested in this piece so cool cool yeah there's 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 there's, there's a lot of conversation about consistency isn't there? a lot of people say to make it in the art world you need a consistent style so you can be recognized instantly but you can also the nft space especially makes it easy to experiment so it's nice to see that you're trying different styles thank you very much cool next up we got mr process smith how you doing mate all right, mate. How's it going? <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. Good. Uh, uh, so, Process Smith is a uh, prolific painter, sculptor, mixed media artist, mural painter, and he's recently had a really successful uh, NFT collectible drop with uh, Derpy Burbs. We won't go into that That's for a different episode, but uh, he's provided us with a three uh, unique paintings. So tell me a little bit about your background as a digital artist and then how you came to come to these pieces for the Portals exhibition. Uh, okay, well, your background is digital. Well, um, uh, it goes back a long way, man. Um, like when I think, I, I, I guess I've never formally like really viewed myself as a digital artist, I guess up until like fairly recently, because as you said, um my work's quite broad in its scope but um you know as you know i you know i was studying uh uh 3d computer animation um 20 years ago <laughs> at university so you know i i guess it's, it's quite never occurred to me that 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 was uh that was digital right um so yeah it's been it's been kind of a a, a winding journey a path to where i am now um, kind of becoming more and more exclusively digital, um, sort of definitely more than one foot in the metaverse, um, as it were. So we've got three pieces here that are a combination of Procreate, the 2D painting program, and also the I know there are element, elements of virtual reality sculpting in here as well. And these pieces are, you have to zoom in on these pieces, don't you? There's a lot of detail and they were created organically and there's a sense of discovery. In, well, in most people, when they, when they work on their artwork, it's a sense of discovery. But um, I've, I've looked at the, the details on these closely and we'll, br we'll bring up some zoomed in sections as well. Um, and there's lots of little faces and things like that that you don't see at first, but are, are formed, formed in your mind. Uh, and you've, I sh it's the sort of thing where different people will see different things in the pieces. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah, that's so okay. So it's pareidolia is the word you were looking for. That's right. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, the pieces, uh, the pieces are kind of um, on on the theme portal. So they they themselves um, are kind of you know they've, they've got that kind of portal vibe. There's like things going through and there's there's something happening there. Um, but they they're actually um, based on. Uh, uh, the the word so each the title of each piece is actually a word um, and it's kind of hard to describe and it's much easier to see the video that you have with Procreate when it when it outputs you can see the entire process from beginning to end but you know you start with a white screen with just the word portals just written in like a graffiti tag you know just hand write graffiti tag portals you know I do a bunch of ones find one that I like you know that's just you know, sliced up kind of random just randomly slice that assemble it. So you create like a new shape out of that, you know, it's rotated, it's, um, you know, it's mirrored. Um, and, you know, then I'm just looking at uh, that shape now. So this is, so this is kind of bringing like on portals, this is kind of bringing um, the, the art forms that I've been using um, over the years, like, you know, graffiti and street art and pulling it through a portal into this artwork, which is going into the digital. So I'm kind of porting over influences and processes and, and uh, concepts like into an artwork 
Um, but I'm not starting with an idea. I'm starting with the word. And then in the same way that the graffiti format works is where you take the word and you, you make it elaborate, you bend it, you twist it and until you create new form out of that until the point where you're asking, can you even read this anymore? I mean, that's what's happening here. So it's that wild style graffiti kind of uh, concept and aesthetic, which kind of kicks starts um, the creative process on these pieces. And then I'm literally, I'm, it's like a meditative, I just uh, empty my mind of any kind of, kind of conscious thought to it. And I just, I just draw what I see. And it's just, and the thing with it is there's just, there's so many different faces and characters and things that I can see. They're all phasing in and out. And you can see this on, on the video replay of, of the actual production of it. You know, it goes through like loads of different states and like, um, like on one of them, what ends up looking like kind of like the, the dog, uh, like it looks a bit kind of like a dog thing. You know, that was a deer and a bull at one point. Yeah, yeah, that one, that was like a deer and a bull at one point. And, you know, and I've bought in these, um, 3D uh, VR hand sculpted um, elements, which come from, um, which actually I use the same technique for. So, um, you know, like sculptors will say, you know, you're finding the piece inside the clay. That's kind of, just the way that I've approached VR sculpting. You know, sometimes I'll take a sketch in there and I'll try and reproduce that. Um, but the characters you see at the bottom here, it's using a kind of, a, uh, like a, it's, it's from a, a character of, um, format that, that I, yeah that's what yeah that I use um you know as if it, it pops up frequently um throughout my sketchbooks and my work um but uh, the actual face and the actual everything that's happening there is just that's just what happened on the day during the sculpt you know and these pieces it's it's literally it's it's what I'm seeing and this piece here is like I really went to town on it you know and I brought in um you know these vr elements um and it's it's kind of the way that i'm seeing this is it's not this isn't really so much quite a portal it's more like a phasing of realities it's more like it's more like multiple portals kind of not so much being compressed on each other but like they're, they're all kind of like those there's any energies are all stacked and actually what you're looking at here is like like the 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 mutation of of all of those forms that's that's happening in the gaps between all those planes of reality or truth so that's the kind of that's that's the kind of way that that I'm thinking and you know as I'm sort of just just looking just looking for shapes you know nice. cool brilliant thank you very much right next up we've got Rosie hello Rosie hello Lee hi Rosie Summers is a animator and a virtual reality art OG really, um, a huge name in the space, very prolific and very popular with VR artists as well as uh, c consumers of VR performances and videos um, and yeah I'm really proud to have her in the, in the Portals exhibition. So tell us a little bit about your, your, your virtual reality process predominantly um, and the mixed reality performances as well and how that equates to this piece and, and how you came to it for the Portals exhibition. Yeah absolutely, um, well a lot of my process is um, very much I've I love I've always loved um, natural forms and you know natural patterns within nature and um, really inspired by just like the cosmic realms of the natural world is what I like to call it from like deep down in the ocean to up above high in space and everything in between just yeah always inspired by nature and that is what's really um, that is that's probably why VR is stuck in my heart so much is because it's a very organic way of working. And obviously I'm already obsessed with these organic formations to then be painting in space and etching my movements, you know, all around me. I just, uh, my paint is like preserved um, as like etchings of movement, which really fascinated me as the concept that could actually, you know, exist inside my artwork, walk around it and then see um, where I've moved, where I've danced in space. And that, that was what really fascinated me when I was first getting into VR and um, found my way in the performance space quite fast just because of how it, it was like I was interpretive dancing. Um, mm -hmm. Whenever I was building a piece, I'm really thinking about what movements I'm making. And especially if it's to music, I'm always thinking about the rhythm and um, what strokes, what brushes to use, which allow me to really like sync that music and start to just really get lost in 
the rhythm and the artwork and um yeah it's it's that synchrony which really fascinates me yeah because a lot of people when you when i know that you've got experience of doing workshops and things like that when you're teaching virtual reality to people and um and other sort of performance work uh, people even when it's not supposed to be a performance people are fascinated by these unusual movements that you end up making when you're embodied in the painting um and I really love how you've done that bit. <laughs> I really love how you do like the, ro the robot dancing and things like that. And that transition between the portals um, is especially cool. So um, tell me a little bit about the, the concept of this uh, sort of mirror portal that we're seeing here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this piece is um, it's called I, I, and it's my first um, virtual reality art performance that I've um, minted. And... I've hardly chopped anything out. I've tried to really keep it as um, like the whole process really of how I brought this piece to life to um, really just show how I connect with the paint and um, how I connect with the virtual world as well. And that was just felt felt really fitting with the, um, the message and the feelings that I was really fueling into this NFT because um, it was created in quite a personal place like it was it's from my personal journey exploring virtual reality um a vr headset to me is like a portal to this virtual um my virtual like ex existence mm -hmm. and um i've created my virtual self i access it through a vr headset and when i wear it my mind is transported to this other dimension um this other world and my body is, is the only thing like tethering me um and i've been exploring this separation for like five years now i think it started in 2016 mm -hmm. um, like properly like yeah 2015 2016 um and yeah i found when like accessing this virtual um existence of mine i sort of felt a shift happening like a, i felt a rush of confidence for one um i didn't feel embarrassed when i put a headset on i could i could i felt comfortable like dancing in front of people um which was just a bizarre thing for me because i was very 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 shy um at the very very start of my career um and then when i created vr art uh, i was faced with this blank space for a canvas um in a world with no distractions mm -hmm. which i've never experienced before because with um you know with when i was painting on canvas because i was a fine artist um traditional oil painter um, I was always distracted by like Twitter notifications and stuff popping up on my phone, you know, to be faced in a world with no distractions for the first ever time. Um, I found myself like tapping into new creative parts of my, my brain that I hadn't yet discovered. Um, really weird, but um, it, it felt, I felt myself like changing the way I worked because beforehand I was very much a portrait artist, characters and portraits, emotional portraiture, that was like my specialism. But then all of a sudden when I was faced with space as a canvas and um, all these possibilities, I really wanted to create worlds and environments, which is something that never appealed to me before. Um, and these, these shifts that were happening to me were, um, they were there when I took the headset off as well. Some of these, these feelings still stayed like this um, creative inspiration from the metaverse. Um, and this, I felt compelled to, go talk about this powerful medium, like do, do mm -hmm. public speaking and stuff. I sort of found this confidence through this medium. Um, I was like changing as, as an artist, as a person. And um, like the, my virtual self, my physical self, the I, I um, was like becoming the me. And that's my inspiration, my feelings behind this piece and the creation of an NFT, these personal feelings really, which I've performed and um, explored through this character's lens excellent thank you very much yeah i can totally relate to that as well uh, uh, there's a reason why people have masked balls you put the masks on you're much more likely to dance and feel confident because you're separated from reality and also there's none of that there's none of those distractions as well so you can find a flow state but you're also inspired by the medium itself and the tools in your hands and the fact that like all of those little idiosyncrasies of your movements can be translated into the piece Right, next up we've got Lucas and Franco. Uh, we've got a piece that's, as far as I can tell, we'll, we'll obviously get into it, but it's photogrammetry based, um, probably with lots of 
tweaks and lots of hand edits and painting in there as well. And, and then we've got some sound here from Franco that is uh, based on uh, field recordings, if I understand that correctly. Um, I'm interested to know how you guys got, came to be working together first. And then, of course, we'll dive into the piece and then a little bit more about it. We know each other from since a, a lot of years. We uh, already worked in virtual and in real uh, exhibitions. Franco did the sound for a 2014 exhibition we did in a museum. He uh, recorded our, our process. Uh, me and other artists was working physically there and Franco was recording all this, uh, this process and the, the sounds of, of that process became the sound uh, the soundtrack for the exhibition. No? So mm. I felt naturally very connected what, to what Franco do because uh, uh, I work with uh, like fragments of reality. No? So uh, through 3D scanning in this case, it's not photogrammetry, but it's almost the same. And Franco works almost exclusively with field recordings he did in the, his trips to, to woods, to other places, or to process. So, uh, like, we, we are trying to build this, like, an object, object, visual object and audio object at the same time, no? So, not for all my pieces, I like to add sound, but this particular piece needed sound. So, I, I asked Franco, in the beginning of the process, and we started like a back-to-back -back process uh, to create the the final the final form. Excellent. So you're sending, are you sending files back and forth or are you able to spend time together and work on this in, in the same space? Yeah, it's pretty much online for the most part, even though we see each other, but a lot of the stuff happens at night and we're just, mm -hmm. you know, having little tests and, you know, yeah, seeing where it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back and forth, very, very de detail oriented, both in visual and the, and the sound aspect. Yeah. So when you said 3D scanning, did you, did you say that's slightly different to photogrammetry then? Yeah, it's like uh, like uh, most artists here uh, here uh, that uh, was doing uh, they do the the switch the jump from physical to to digital. Mm -hmm. I like uh, some years ago I confronted with the VR experience of the process of working with the space now working uh, installative aspect of VR. You are working with your body. And later on, I I was I, I discovered the photogrammetry thing uh, of like you know taking pictures of an object, person, or a place, and build a 3D model. 3D scanning allows me to work more directly than photogrammetry because I work with my iPad and the, the 3D scanner, and I go around the object. In this case, my partner. Uh, and um, she was like laying in the couch, so I can like very directly capture a moment of the everyday reality that we are having a lot of time to have, uh, no, a home homemade reality yeah. of our own. Yeah. So it's a very very direct process of going around the the object and seeing the the mesh like building up. It's very very fun. Mm -hmm. And the sound recording sounds to me like there's so much texture and so many layers of different sounds there. It's almost like you're sort of uh, ripping open or crinkling open or unfolding reality in a sense. But you can tell it. You can tell straight away it's come from recordings from from the, the real world rather than synthesized. So, what uh, what sort of uh, is it the journey you take on the process of the sound, Franco? Yeah. So for this piece, I I went with my. Um, what the piece suggested me, the visual piece, when I saw it, I was like, okay, what comes to mind? 
And I had this idea of working with recordings from like glaciers and ice and like dispersion under ice sheets in lakes and stuff like that. So, so I went sourcing for those particular recordings because I wanted to get really textural and uh, detailed sound, very crispy, a lot of low end, but also in the high end, a lot of a lot of little details for this piece. Uh, the sound is uh, very collage-like, same as the, name, the image. There's this relationship between that, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I like to play around ambiguity with sound. So I like to take sound from daily life and, and stuff that's happening around in my surroundings. And then, you know, these sounds could be as organic as synthetic. If you hear them, you know, it's very blurry, the line between organic and synthetic, and it, it's very ambiguous. Mm -hmm. So I like to flirt with that idea that, you know, it's very subjective, how people are gonna react to those sounds, what is going to trigger on them, or I don't know, if they're going to ask themselves, oh, what, what, what is this sound, you know, where is it coming from, or where is it, inside what, you know? So yeah, I like to, I, I would say a lot of my work plays around the idea of ambiguity in sound and how, you know, you can have fun with that. I, w I wanted to say that uh, on the process of this piece, I realized that, in fact, my, my microphones are in fact portals to just, you know, open up for what's going on in our surroundings and that sometimes we don't even realize because we can't get close enough. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was a really nice realization to, to realize that, in fact, you know, recording sounds is kind of opening portals for what's going on around us. So, yeah, that was pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, they say that that's why music sends you back in time as well, right? Like uh, sound, sound taps into a part of your brain that really sends you through time. And um, when you record something, especially when you're recording a field recording, um, there, there's always going to be background sounds that you don't notice at the time. But when you've got your headphones on, you can you can sort of pinpoint those small small things. Um, I know that I know that if you use a stereo mic as well uh when, you, when you're doing your feel yeah i thought you might so that um that, that, that it roughly um replicates the two ears doesn't it so you can actually get the left and right as if you were in the same place with decent microphones that do that sort of thing and that really sends you back in time or into into a different place yeah that's pretty much for me recordings are extensions of our ears you know microphones mm -hmm. and like it's like just you know and amplify them so i really love that yeah i want to i want to add a thing about uh maybe franco you you will have a, a, I don't know, some other opinion. I like the, the this piece to be like, the, the portal aspect of this for me is like, I was seeing my partner like lying and, and thinking all the time, like all of ourselves during these lockdown times. And it was like the person reflecting on itself, on uh, on the, I, I reflecting on myself, like the, the mind thinking, the our capability of being like in other place at the same time as, as the place we are now so it's like multiple realities happening in the same time and mm -hmm. at the same time is nothing is happening no yeah. so so for me it's like underlying this everyday surface there is another reality happening inside our minds and virtual mm -hmm. is like the potentiality of it no so for me it was like this needs to to have sound because the, the image is just one layer of, of it. But I say, Franco, go for it and bring it. <laughs> cool. So thank you very much for everybody joining us today. It's been really interesting to take a little dive into your artworks. Um, all of these pieces are up on first divs for bidding. Uh, they're 24 hours from the first bid uh, above the reserve or at the reserve rather. And um, and I'm going to be building a gallery space as well so we can look at the pieces up uh, together as, as if they were a real exhibition in uh, Mozilla Hubs as well. Um, I'd just like to say thank you very much for everybody being part of this collection. It's been a huge honour reaching out to some of my favourite artists ever and, and, and getting them on board and in a room together and in an exhibition and to see it being such a success. Um, I'm very proud of it. And um, yeah, thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, if you can drop us a like and a subscription, that would be very cool. You can stick on notifications if you want, and then you'll know when the next episode drops. Um, if you look for all the secret hidden puzzles and Easter eggs in all of the last five episodes and piece them together to create a picture, you will get a golden ticket to a metaverse party of the year. No, none of that's true. Um, 
but I do want you to just um, have a little look at my piece for week two. Um, this is the Flickering Veil. It is a concept piece for a potentially working portal that could be built and put into the metaverse. I've got the 3D model. Um, but what I would like it to do is that if you walk through it, it completely wipes your metamask. It deletes your identity, sets your avatar to default and essentially kills you. I'll see you next week.